Joshua Wong wasn't even a year old when the handover happened. He's a symbol of the umbrella movement. He's been arrested twice and admits he's a step away from prison. Yet his activism goes on. Here, helping cover up the statue symbolizing Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule. The mainland's media has branded Wong an extremist, race traitor and enemy of the state. But in the space of just a few years, he's attained almost celebrity status. What we hope to do is just demand freedom of mind and freedom of speech. It's not Hong Kong anymore. And a just-released documentary portrays his campaign for greater autonomy for Hong Kong. Today, Wong says the one country, two systems formula is almost dead, and he blames interference by Chinese officials. Joshua Wong, do you consider Hong Kong to be a separate country? I consider Hong Kong remain uniqueness and different with the system with mainland China. So you do believe it's independent of China? Um, no doubt that now Hong Kong is part of China and we are under the rule of the Communist Party. But the fact is, what I hope is to fight for democracy and autonomy in this city. And when I recognize Hong Kong as a unique city, as my hometown, what I hope is China should respect um, the promise in the Joint Declaration and let Hong Kong people to have democracy to freely elect the leader. Do you think Hong Kong will ever be independent of China? Um, I'm not the one to advocate Hong Kong's independence, but I'm the one who fight for autonomy and against the interference of China towards Hong Kong. As we promise to have high degree autonomy in the international treaty, which means the Joint Declaration, I wonder why China government, especially under the hard line of President Xi, continue to ignore its promise. And that's why we, especially for young generation, we just conclude one country, two system in the 20th anniversary seems to be a lie to Hong Kong people. The new chief executive, Carrie Lam, has said that she'll push for a new security law known as Article 23 to counter the independent sentiment in Hong Kong. Do you think that would bring people like you and others who support you back onto the streets? Absolutely. In 2003, just because of the proposal to implement Article 23, the national security law is just result in more than half a million people. In Hong Kong, they just come to the street and to generate the largest rally in Hong Kong in this century. And at the same time, we also realized that if the China government continue to ignore its promise in the one country, two system, which would be the basic law to allow people to have high degree autonomy, the result is people will be more dissatisfied and were ready to come to the street. Do you think you will see full democracy in Hong Kong in your lifetime? I hope to see full democracy in Hong Kong in my lifetime, but whether Hong Kong can implement or achieve democracy of thought, it not depends on me. It, is, it depends on Hong Kong people and also international community. But if you had accepted what China had offered you, which was a chance to elect your own leader, albeit a committee would vet who those leaders could be, who those candidates could be, you would have stand, stood the possibility of perhaps having that 2047 deadline extended. But that's now gone. I would say that general democracy and universal suffrage would means that the candidate of the election should not face any selection or pre-screening process from the pro-China camps or the China government. If only the one who loyal to the Communist Party of China can be the candidate in the chief executive election. And the election is meaningless because it do, they don't exist true competition. And what I mean is, even we can elect the chief executive of Hong Kong with full democracy now, but it can just implement until 2047. Because in the International Treaty of Joint Declaration, it, didn't mention, it did not mention what would be the further arrangement to cross beyond 2047. Can you imagine yourself being here after 2047 when this becomes just another Chinese city? That's the reason for me to fight for democracy in Hong Kong. Because if we keep silence and do nothing, I'm just afraid one or two decades later, Hong Kong will just turn to be another mainland China city. And that's the reason for me to fight for my future. You speak to a lot of ordinary people down there. 
their priority is not democratic reform, their priority is better welfare, better education and affordable housing. Those are the issues that really matter most to, to Hong Kong people, it seems. Why not focus on those issues which present you know, more attainable targets? According to the last election result of the Legislative Council, pro-democracy camp that put democracy and political system reform as the highest priority, our camp get 60% of votes in the direct election, which proved that we are the majority and the pro-China camp with only 35% of support in the vote, they are the minority. If you had five minutes alone with Xi Jinping, what would you say to him? My only recommendation to President Xi is please rely on your promise in the joint declaration and let us get a chance to elect the leader of our city. And that's your promise. Hong Kong enjoys more freedoms than any other part of China. Why can't you accept that? that this is essentially going to be as good as it gets? Economic freedom and judicial independence will be eroded if it's lack of democracy. But I think as the only city in China have certain degree of freedom, we are not the one who only bear the responsibility to push forward democratization in Hong Kong. We will also hope to push forward democracy in China. So you can understand now why the Chinese leadership regards you as an enemy of the state. They, they believe that you want to try and bring down the Chinese Communist Party. I just I doubt why ask for democracy for the country that I live will be recognized as the enemy of the state. What I ask for is ending one party dictatorship. What I mean is we hope to have true competition for the leader of China instead of only one Communist Party of China would lead China forever.